Great to be with you again on another episode of Forecasting Success. I'm your host, Ryan Brandon, uh, and I would like to, uh, before we get started, just quickly thank our title sponsor, AROC, for allowing us to uh, help this presentation happen. I'm very excited about today's guest. I've known him about a decade now, maybe a little bit longer, uh, throughout uh, different our different roles uh, within the workers' comp industry and uh, kind of the orbit that surrounds that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce him to you now, Hiawatha Frank. Great to see you again, sir. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Appreciate you having me. Before Hiawatha gets going, we're, we're going to make a special edition for this, where we're not just going to talk to Hiawatha about his background and experience, but also his uh, involvement in Kids Chance of Texas. Uh, they have their big annual fundraiser coming up in October. Uh, I think we both obviously see great value in Kids Chance, and so we're going to use this opportunity to plug Kids Chance. But before we do that, uh, let me let uh, Hiawatha introduce himself. All right. Great. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Born and raised in Austin. Been in the insurance industry about 31 years. Um, graduated from Texas State, 1992. Started my uh, career with Texas Mutual or Texas Workers' Comp Insurance Fund at the time as one of the first uh, in the in the I was a member of the first um, adjuster trainee program at Texas uh, Mutual or Texas Workers' Comp Insurance Fund at the time. And I uh, went from there to uh, being an adjuster trainee, worked in Austin, Houston. Then I had the opportunity to work at TASB, Texas Association of School Boards. Worked there for five years as a, as a claims manager and department director, then left to work in the private sector at AIG in Hartford, and was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to come back to TASB in 2016, and I'm currently the claims officer for uh, Texas Association of School Boards. And in that role, I um, oversee claims from cyber, uh, workers' comp, auto, liability, and property. Um, workers' comp is our largest line of coverage. We provide workers' comp coverage for about half the school districts in the state of Texas. Um, very rewarding. We, um, we've got about uh, 50 folks in our workers' comp operation and um, appreciate the opportunity to kind of share about TASB and uh, my role at um, Kids Chance. Yeah, well, bef well let's, let's spend a little bit of time talking about you uh, and before we get to how you got involved with Kids Chance and all that. Sure. So when I first met you was when I was the Workers' Comp Commissioner in Texas uh, and I w first was introduced to you, I turn around and I see the tallest guy I think I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Uh, then he turned out to also be just a great guy, very easy to talk to, uh, and and very knowledgeable. So, as a commissioner, when I was first appointed and new and trying to figure out who all the people were and what their roles were, uh, it made it very easy to want to talk to you more. Uh, weren't pushy like some folks. weren't trying to set an agenda. We're just trying to lay it out as, you know, here's here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. Here's the value there. Uh, so just on a personal note, I just want to say thank you for that. Appreciate it. Uh, and then even more recently, this, this past session, um, I did some work uh, with the uh, county risk management pools and, and got to work with you again in that capacity. And still the exact same pleasure as it was 10 years ago when I first met him. So uh, when he accepted to come on today, I was extremely excited to have him here. Uh, and I just think he's phenomenal and you guys are going to get a lot out of it today. Uh, we are going to spend a little bit of time. I, I told him we were just going to talk about Kids Chance, but now that he started talking about his background, it's so fascinating. He's done so many things. Uh, I do kind of want to just touch on it a little bit more. Uh, but, um, you know, how did you get involved uh, in the industry, uh, you know, getting involved with the fund back then? Uh, and then, you know, just kind of just what made you want to get involved and then stay involved? Sure. Actually, when I worked, when I was a student at Texas State, I had a management, business management uh, degree actually worked in career planning and placement at it was Southwest Texas back in the, the at that time, which is now Texas State. Uh, I think I had 12 interviews my senior year doing eight different things. So my management was very broad. Um, and then I knew the uh, someone in management at Texas Workers' Comp Insurance Fund. His name was Ren Bass. And he mentioned, he said, well, there's a new small insurance operation starting up. I think there were about 50 or so people in, at the time, and they were still actually building out the offices for Texas Workers' Compensation oh, Fund. Wow. 
and I had an interview. I, I never forget. They were kind of in. It, it was under construction during my interview. My interview was like 15 minutes, <laughs> and they were interviewing a, a, a ton of adjusters for this role. And I just got fortunate enough to fall into insurance claims or, or workers' compensation. Uh, I had no prior knowledge of workers' comp. That was kind of where I wasn't on my career planning map. Uh, but once I got into it, uh, I saw the opportunity. And one thing about it is when I came into the industry in 1993, the new law had just been implemented in, what, 92? Yes, I so, think that's right, yeah. So there were a lot of um, adjusters who knew old law, but being new in the industry really gave me a step up. So I remember I would just read all the appeals panels that came out and just to kind of understand how the law worked. And so it kind of leveled the playing field for people early in their career. So I was able to handle all types of claims. I think I had either a zip code or a, a, a alphabet spread and whatever claim came in under that zip code or um, alphabet, I handled it. So whether it's minor or major, and I just got a ton of experience and uh, Texas, Workers Comp, Texas Workers Comp Insurance Fund or Texas Mutual was growing so fast, it just created a lot of opportunity for me to grow professionally. Uh, I went from being an adjuster in two and a half years to working on the proceedings team, prepping cases for benefit review conferences. And uh, again, I transferred from uh, Austin to, to work in the Houston office. And then um, I got the opportunity to work at uh, the Hartford in Houston as a large account claims manager. And uh, there I handled uh, seven states. Oh. And that was a challenge. So it's, you know, for adjusters or claims administrators handling claims in multiple states, that's a, that's a challenge, right? <laughs> Texas is complex, but when you add, you know, seven, eight states, it's really challenging. But I learned a lot between working at the Hartford and AIG and both of those organizations, I was a, cl in, I was a claims director and oversaw teams of adjusters and it really was a great experience and I, I grew a lot and was able to um, just absorb so much from handling different states and going through different situations and even when I worked at uh, when I worked at the Hart, uh, the Hartford I worked both in Houston and then I transferred and then I actually went to work for the AIG uh, Dallas. In, you know yeah. actually in Atlanta Atlanta or Alpharetta suburb of Atlanta in 2000, around 2006, right around the financial crisis. Okay. And so everything was great when I started. <laughs> I think the stock was $133 a share. And then within a week, it got down to 33 cents. Ooh. And uh, we, we were a really large claims operation. And the only thing that good, that only good that came from that, a lot of people want to settle their claims. Yeah. Because they thought we were going out of business. <laughs> So and that's another thing that's interesting when you work in multiple states and you have the opportunity to settle claims. It's so much different than Texas where it's uh, lifetime medical. So um, I learned a lot just going through that adversity because, you know, when you manage through a crisis, you, you, you've got to grow really fast. Yeah, that's a very good point about the different states. And I think all of our viewers understand the uniqueness in Texas with all the different uh, options that employers have, but then also, like you say, old law to new law. You know, we've been through two rounds of changes, a little, big round of medical changes in the 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, when I was commissioner, we had these uh, national conferences. There was um, IA, IABC, and then there was the more regional ones, so like SACA, for example, Southern Association of Workers' Comp Administrators, even though Montana, Michigan, Maine, and those states were included in there, 28 states, but uh, gave us an opportunity. And a lot of the commissioners would talk, and I'm guessing a lot of the people at those conferences too, about the differences in the states. And it seemed that most of the time they were trying to figure out how to implement a lot of what Texas has done. So you mentioned settlement of claims. Uh, you know, that is a topic that has kind of resurfaced over the last few years again in Texas. Yeah. Um, do you, and I'm putting you on the spot here, but do you have an opinion on whether or not we should have the ability to settle claims without having to go through, you know, kind of roundabout ways to do it? Yeah, I think there are definitely pros and cons of being able to settle a workers' comp case and just seeing it play out. And I think I've managed claims in 22 states or something close to that. 
when, when you work in a state that's heavily litigated where you are expected to settle cases that are questionable, then you're actually, if you have, a, if you have an unwitnessed claim and you just want to get it off the books, just say the employee is a challenging employee for the employer, you actually just work in that into your reserves that you're going to pay claims that may not even be compensable. And so you're doing that cost-benefit analysis. And um, the, 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 the negative side of settling claims, I think for the claimant is, if you settle claims and you later have some medical, situ um, um, uh, medical situations arise where you need that treatment, but you spent that settlement money, that puts the claimant in a really, really bad spot. And so mm -hmm. I've seen a, a lot of states where you settle a claim for just say 15, 20,000, a person's had a back surgery, and then five, 10 years later, the person's having some issues with that back surgery, and they've settled their claim. You know, then you've got a whole market around the Medicare set yeah. aside. Yep. So that can sometimes be very complex and sometimes settle, uh, slow down resolving a claim or settling a claim. Um, again, there are pros and cons. We've got claims that have been open that are medically active from late 80s. We've got some from the mid 90s. We've got a lot, we've got cases that are still open and active from claimants injured in 1992, 93, 94, 95. Uh, and I think that's good that they have access to that lifetime medical care. Yeah. Well, while you were talking, a couple of different things came up in my mind. The first one is, you're right, Jim, who's a great guy, former commissioner in Mississippi, has moved to Austin to be near his grandkids, uh, but he's working for a, 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 a firm that is in multiple states that does those that it, MSAs. Uh, the, the other thing that popped into my mind was when I first got to the agency, I was looking over the numbers of where we're spending money and why and found a, a building that we were paying rent for. I think at the time it was $600,000 a year in rent. And I said, what is this building? And they said, that's where we keep all the claims files. Wow. And so I drove over there and sure enough, it's a giant warehouse with files going all the way back to the 60s of just literally paper files. And, and I said, well, I understand why we need to keep these files, yeah. uh, but I don't understand why we're paying $600,000 a year in rent. So we started a process of putting everything you know, online and like you know, scanning all the documents and yeah. putting them in a much safer, easier storage facility than like considering if a warehouse is gonna burn down. But yeah. we didn't complete that under my tenure. It was under Cassie's tenure, so she gets credit for it. That's but uh, at least we got out of that. That's so. good. Um, but and again, for the viewers, like that is a perfect example of why I think Hiawatha is great, right? I asked him a point blank question uh, that wasn't even scripted, and, it, and he sits there, goes through the pros and cons, and talks about it from a substantive uh, uh, perspective rather than pushing a narrative. So, um, thank you for validating thank what I just said about you right there out, out, out of the gate. So, okay, so let's get back to the the point of our, our focus point on this special episode. Uh, of Kids Chance. And so we've gone through how you got involved in what was the fund, is now Texas Mutual, kind of you know, the different iterations of your career through claims handling. Um, where did Kids Chance get involved in there? Where did you hear about them uh, initially? And uh, So initially I, I was exposed to Kids Chance through various workers' comp conferences. Uh, Jane Stone, who I've known since I started my career, had talked to me about potentially joining the board many years ago, and I think she was one of the founders when uh, uh, the, the Texas chapter was established in 2015. And um, I talked to her about it over the years, and you know, I've met uh, many injured workers who have been catastrophically injured. I've met widows, widowers, but I never really appreciated the, the impact that a catastrophic injury or fatal injury has on a child. Mm -hmm. And so this really, you know, we all seek purpose in our careers. And this really um, gives me a sense of even greater purpose for just providing benefits to those catastrophically injured um, employees and helping their kids be successful. Because people don't think about like the mental impact, the psychological impact it has on a child, especially if they're a teenager. I mean, that's, that's some critical years. And knowing the work that Kids Chance does to support those children through the system, um, I, I have a lot of respect for the organization. Yeah. And appreciate the opportunity to serve. Yeah. 
And, and thanks for mentioning that it came in 2015. Um, we can thank Ace and Chubb for that. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you know the story. No. So uh, at the agency, uh, we uh, did some investigating into them, and we were going to settle uh, some um, issues that we had seen uh, with some some of the way they were handling uh, their business back back then. And um, I I was again still pretty new to the agency at that time, and so my agency staff said, you know, this could potentially be the largest settlement we've had ever. Uh, against an insurance company and um, they said also uh, they're going to want to they want to come in and negotiate it with you and I said all right well let's um, you know let's figure out some negotiating outs like where we you know where can we not bend where can we bend uh, you know what can we do and uh, the staff said have you heard of an organization called Kids Chance and I said I had not at that time so I reached out to some people that I did know uh, on the national circuit that were involved with Kids Chance at the national level. Okay. And uh, yeah, sure enough, they said there isn't a Texas chapter. So what we did was we, we negotiated down uh, the uh, settlement with, with them. And instead, they had to put up a hundred grand to set up a foundation to start a Kids wow. Chance of Texas chapter. So Beautiful, I did, I did not know that history. Yeah. Uh, and that I appreciate you sharing that. That's that's really giving back to that industry and, and the, the recipients of um, workers' comp benefits. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I, was, I honestly didn't realize the impact of it at the time. It was, I, it was great staff at the agency. I have to give them all the credit, but uh, I am proud that my name is on that order. Uh, and um, you know, then over the next three years, as commissioner watching it grow, but I do remember when they first started, I said, all right, guys, if you're going to put this together, it's going to have to work. You know, yeah. can't, I, I can't go back to the governor and be like, I know I was did. I thought I was trying to do this, but it didn't work. You know, so um, they scrambled at the beginning to find recipients. Uh, but I, I don't think that's the case anymore. Yeah. So just to give you an example. So Kids Chance um, nationally, they were founded in 1988 in Georgia, and now they have 50 chapters. Um, I think in 2015, they had one scholarship recipient. And 2020, we were got, we got got up to 19, and this year we're paying 34 amazing uh, student scholarships. So it's grown tremendously. So uh, that's that's grown leaps and bounds. Yeah, and and that's a that's a testament to Jane Stone and all the other founding board members and, and folks that had ideas like uh, Jessica uh, Corna was uh, or Jessica Barda was uh, running. Uh, OIC at the time and I mean we had them scouring through uh, their claims trying to find uh, kids that could potentially benefit I mean that, there was a lot of people that were working really hard to get that organization off the ground and uh, I'm glad to hear that you were one of the original people they were looking to get on the board so what made you actually decide to go through with it uh, well the timing was right I mean I think um, so I, I don't know about I don't know what I was always interested, and um, I don't know between 2015 and 2023 20, what took so long, but I'm, I'm really appreciative being on it. And, and the thing I like about it most, I'm on the scholarship committee, so we, at, on the scholarship committee, we actually review. Yeah, yeah, T tell us about, uh, maybe back up just a sure. little bit, and tell us about how Kids Chance of Texas works. Okay, so Kids Chance of Texas, um, again, nationally located, uh, start, it was started in 1988, Found in Georgia, there are 50 chapters. Um, we have our Kids Chance of Texas. We have our own board here. Uh, we run a budget right now about 200,000 or so. The vast, over 92% of that is, is paid out the scholarship monies. Uh, the board itself, we donate to the board. I mean, we, we donate to uh, Kids Chance to help fund it. But our big fundraiser is the annual golf tournament that's gonna be in Octo October 28th in the Dallas area, uh, Council Hills um, golf course. That's, that's our biggest um, fundraising event. And we also take in donations throughout the year. Um, and so we, um, we have scholarships that are provided for students who are between 16 and 25 who have a parent who was injured in an occupational injury. So it, uh, most of them are workers' comp claimants. Uh, but it doesn't have to be workers' comp. Any occupational injury 
uh, even if it's work related, but it happens to not be covered for some reason. If it's work related and the employee was in the state of Texas, uh, it's el they could be eligible. So yeah. um, the scholarships are for, again, students between 16 and 25, post high school education. It could be a four year college, traditional four year college, uh, community college, two year degree, trade, technical school, uh, any of those. And so uh, we fund up to eight semesters per student. Uh, again, $2,500 a semester. They submit proof of enrollment, grades, and it's not based on financial need. So that's, you know, you think about scholarships, it's not based on financial needs. It's just if they, if the parent has even, has either had a fatal injury or a catastrophic injury, uh, they are eligible. Okay, um, so just reading through those applications, it is uh, each each student is a story. Uh -huh. uh, we even have some siblings that are both getting scholarship at the, at the same time, which is beautiful. Yeah. It's nice. Uh, and you think about um, the scholarship or kids stance, it's more than just financial support. They have a group of cohorts that have had that similar experience. Uh, so you've got that again, you've got about 30 students at any given time receiving these scholarships. Uh, we even provide uh, mental health support through Teladoc. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. So we've got a tele uh, telemedicine services available because as you can imagine, uh, these have kids have really gone through some tough times. Mm. So uh, we provide mental support, mental health support for these students as well. And then we're just encouraging them through that process to help them both financially and emotionally uh, be productive, happy, whole uh, adults. And um, it's a process. And so, you, you know, you, you th think about fatal injuries, but you've, we've got some uh, catastrophic brain injuries, some people who, some, some employees that um, their whole being has changed. And, and most of these injuries are tend to be blue collar or transportation workers. And I get, but we see them from all walks of life. And, and the students, they really appreciate that support. Because even if it's $2,500, just say their tu tuition's 10,000, just for them to know that we're behind them, encouraging them, supporting them, it's, it's a lot more than just that financial support. Oh, that's fantastic. So you say each one's a story. Uh, is there a particular story or two maybe that kind of just stays with you that you're excited about as far as being able to help or uh, any specific examples maybe i read an application a few months ago and the student was in el paso and uh, her father was fatally killed in a um, auto accident work-related auto accident and she wrote the essay about how she discovered her father was dead. She talked about how she drove up to the house and saw DPS vehicles in the front yard Oof. and uh, just all the emotions that went through uh, her mind when that happened. And she talked about how it changed her family, dynamics of her family. And um, she was, and she talked about how she, she did do how how it impacted the family, her siblings, how it impacted her mother. And then she has really, really um, uh, thrived in school because she wants to make her father proud. Oh. And she, she just wrote about how much she appreciated the scholarship. And, um, you know, these things redefine a child. I mean, they, they could, it could change the course of sure. a child's life this type of situation and, and, and she's really committed to being uh, a successful um, person and and for, for her mother and, and and her father's name so it's it's really moving so where is she in the process so she has the scholarship yes and yes. Where, where, where is she what's she doing uh, she's going to college in El Paso and she's doing great I mean yeah. ma making excellent grades I think she wants to be a speech therapist. Oh, wow. um, and it's amazing to see these students who have like a really clear uh, career goal. And I know I just, I just want to have a job in an office. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she is really focused and has a, a clear 
vision on where she wants to be. Well, and how she's able to use that to motivate herself to make her dad proud. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Yeah, she's taken this tragedy and made it something to motivate her. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's great. And it's awesome. For lack of a better word, that's awesome that, that Kids Chance could be there to do that. If other people wanted to get involved with Kids Chance, uh, what would be a way or how could they get involved with it? Okay. So um, it almost starts with the adjuster. Or if you handle any occupational injury that ends up in a fatal uh, accident or um, a catastrophic injury, making the referral to us so we know that that student is a potential recipient. So we definitely want to continue the pipeline of applicants that come through, again, 16 to 25, or if, if, if you identify um, a claimant who has children that are 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, just say they're early, you can maybe send them the information or maybe diary it. it you may diary that claim for a year, two, three years down the road yeah. to send that information out. And again, um, that injured worker is not going to have any knowledge. Of the the widow, widower, or, or the claimant, if they're still with us, they're not going to be aware of this scholarship. So we have to get the word out to the injured, to the potential recipients, um, and make sure that they know it's it's kind of outside the the system, so to speak. But it's an available resource that workers' comp, occupational, anyone who works in the industry of serving, administering claims, helping claimants with the occupational injury, they can help. So again, if you're an adjuster, send a referral, check out the website, it tells you how to submit or, or make a referral. And then if you are um, an assistant participant, whether you're a plaintiff attorney, defense attorney, medical provider, anyone providing services to people who have occupational injuries, you can support us financially or come out and support us at the golf term in, our, in October. So there are a lot of opportunities. Come, oh. pl come play. Yeah, we're going to get to the golf term. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. We're making sure that this goes out in time for the golf term. Perfect. Uh, and in fact, I think uh, the producers are trying to hustle the production of this so that okay. we can get it out Good. and get Perfect. it out into the into the ecosphere uh, with plenty of time for people to, to watch this, understand the importance of Kids Chance, understand what it does for these kids, uh, how we can get involved, what we can do, and then uh, and then hopefully, you know, we'll get to come play golf in, um, in just a second. But uh, so obviously, uh, as, an, as an adjuster, it's always great to be aware, uh, you know, if the uh, file has kids, right, uh, mm -hmm. particularly fatality or um, uh, what was the exact word you used? Uh, any catastrophic, catastrophic injury. So, so we have claimants who are on LIBS, uh, lifetime income benefits, really high impairment ratings, something where they're going to have a catastrophic injury. Now you can have a catastrophic injury and still work, earn money. Um, it's not financially based. And so I just want that, that's, that's really important to, to remember. It's not based on financial need. Yeah, that's great. Um, so then beyond the adjusters and those touching the claims, and, I, and I'm glad you mentioned the attorneys too, because a lot of those claims are gonna have attorneys involved. So for them to be aware, um, uh, you know, for, uh, the types that go to um, association meetings or to conferences uh, or in some way involved in like the vendor space or anything, is there anything that they can do to get involved with Kids Chance? Uh, when you see us at a conference, come say hi. <laughs> you know, so we, we are. He's great to go we, say we, hi to, yeah, by we, the way. Definitely you, go say hi. Yeah, you probably won't miss me, but I, um, we would normally have a presence at most conferences. So just coming in and saying hi. If, um, again, if we have volunteer opportunities at, the golf tournament or any other uh, venue, or if you want to service and support us some other way, but the, the golf tournament is the number one fundraiser that we need volunteers, financial support. And if you go to the website, there are other ways to, to donate and support the, the organization. Uh, I w we will go ahead and finally talk about the golf tournament. We've okay. teased it a bunch. I've been uh, fortunate enough, this is kind of a lull in the legislative cycle. So I've been playing a good amount of golf recently. So, so guys, if you want me back on the team again this year, I promise we won't finish dead last, uh, at least not on my end. Uh, but it was a lot of fun last year. I know uh, AROC uh, sponsored a whole, uh, our, the president of uh, our board, uh, chair of our board, the president of the association was, was there, uh, greeting everybody as they came through. So Michael, thank you for doing that. Uh, and uh, AROC has a conference uh, that 
happens every year, and it's for mostly you know the, the uh, occupational injury providers that are outside of comp, but there's comp involved too, and a lot of the vendors overlap. Uh, so there's great synergy there, uh, but they always schedule it right around the golf tournament oh, nice. so that we can go to Dallas and play in the golf tournament and then go, go to the conference, uh, which, is, which is great planning and it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't done the golf tournament, I uh, highly recommend playing in it. Um, if you can't do that, I highly recommend sponsoring a hole, volunteering your time. There's great food vendors out there, people giving out uh, you know, free swag and yeah. Uh, just every, everybody's there to support a great cause, so it's a, it's a wonderful event. Uh, and, and as Hiawatha said, it's the, it's the biggest fundraiser of the year. So uh, if you haven't been paying attention, Kids Chance of Texas is essentially the number one organization in Texas uh, for helping uh, these children uh, move on from a very difficult situation in their life and, and, and take uh, some stock and some pride and some uh, motivation purpose uh, and doing great things. And the stories are incredible. Uh, you get a lot of stories at the golf tournament. Everybody likes to talk about a particular uh, kid or a particular yeah. outcome. Uh, and it's just, everybody's there for a good cause. So it's a lot of great folks uh, there for the right reasons. Uh, I think I saw you on the, on the course last year. As a volunteer, <laughs> you, you don't want me on your team. Now I, I play, I dig a lot of holes. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I just, I, I support it with the, the logistics. I may play this year, but uh, you don't want me on your team. Okay. Uh, I was going to tell you one story that came to mind. Um, you know, when you think about kids' chance, you think about the scholarships, you think about a terrible claim, terrible accident happens, claims accepted, benefits paid. Uh, looked at an application for a scholarship recipient where it was a cancer claim that was denied initially in the system, BRC, CCA, Judicial Review, uh, the claimant prevailed. Mm. The claimant's attorney referred the family to Kids Chance. We awarded the son a scholarship. And so you think about the friction in a system wow. and say, well, even though there was even though there was question about compensability, ultimately the courts determined it was a compensable cancer claim. The claim was accepted, benefits paid, and fortunately, that plaintiff attorney referred that to us, and we paid a scholarship to that child. And 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 it's it's when you when I saw that, I was like, that just yeah. goes full circle. It does. And and the system, even though you can have disputes in the system, you pay the benefits ultimately if it's deemed compensable, and then the system, including Kids Chance, I mean supporting the system, uh, supported that that child yeah, through yeah. college. And that, that's a great point. So as, as commissioner, your job is essentially to make everybody a little bit unhappy. Because mm. if somebody's really happy and somebody's really unhappy, you probably didn't get the rule right or you probably didn't get uh, whatever you were, you know, whatever the purpose was right. But if everybody's griping a little bit, we kind of thought, all right, I think we got it where we're supposed to right be. Thing. Which is a testament to your point to the friction in the system. And it's, it's designed. I mean, it's, it's confrontational. You have uh, attorneys on both sides. You, you have these claims, uh, contested disputes. You have... Uh, I mean, the whole purpose of it is to get to that, you know, is it compensable or not? And, you know, if so, what, how, when, and why? And, and uh, you know, you've got, uh, you got the medical review stuff. So sometimes you have the providers against the insurance companies. The, 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 just the way the system is, is designed is by necessarily to have this friction. And so to your point, every stakeholder that I'm aware of uh, in and around the workers' comp system is behind kids' chance. So it's the one thing That's where we right. could all say, hey, look, even though we may not be able to get along and everything or we may have to uh, bicker about something or disagree, I think everybody could agree that this is a great cause and something worthy of being a, a part right. of, uh, whether it's volunteering or just looking for kids to help or uh, donating or, or joining the board as you did. But uh, uh, that's, that's a great point. And, I, and I'll say as an aside, when I left the agency, I had a revolving door before I could do any government relations stuff. So the first few months, I couldn't really do anything. Uh, and so I went and, and looked at how the other agencies would conduct their uh, rulemaking and open meetings. And I realized I got hosed because not everybody has this confrontational system like I do. But like every yeah, time you true, do one thing, true. there's somebody's complaining to the chairman of your committee or whatever. You got to go explain yourself to the governor sometimes. It's like, 
It's, it's just the nature of it. Yeah. But, you know, I went over and I, I use the Water Development Board as an example all the time because their job is literally just to hand out grants to communities for water. No friction. It's no friction. And everybody that came in to testify, I mean, they were telling these commissioners they were going to name their firstborn kids after them. I thought, oh, man, <laughs> how, how did I not get this appointment, Governor? What? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, That's but, tough. but yeah, so Kids Chance is the closest I think we come to the Water Development Board uh, <laughs> as far as it goes in our system. But uh, uh, yeah, no, that's a great, great point. So um, I. I was gonna say, is there anything else that you wanted to mention about Kids Chance that we haven't talked about yet? I don't think so. I, I think um, things are going great. I think we've hit our stride. I mean, we, we're constantly trying to improve our operation, uh, always putting the children first. You know, I mean, the, the, the child, the family, the parent, that's our customer. We wanna make sure that we support them through this process. So, um, no, I think, I. Appreciate the support, the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, again, Kids Chance is a, a great opportunity for you to give back. And again, we're all looking for purpose at work and in our careers. And I think this this will just affirm that we're doing the right thing for the right reason. Yeah, uh, thank you for being here, Hiawatha. And for those of you that don't know him, uh, you just got a good glimpse into who he is, a great person uh, supporting a great cause. And uh, again, I'm proud to have you on here. So thanks for coming. Great thanks to see you. Ryan. Appreciate it. Thanks, All right.